Ah, hi, hello. Uh, welcome to the New Year's Eve edition 2023. Uh, away from Stratford upon Avon last night in good time. Feel fresh and fine, to be honest. Uh, we've made it to Birmingham. Uh, we're staying at the Royal George, uh, a budget hotel. Uh, it's cost us less than 40 quid for a, a room on New Year's Eve. So you can't really knock pricing like that, can you? We are about 10, 15 minute walk outside Digbeth side of Birmingham. So we're gonna go and try and crack on and do that today. We are also right in the shadow, where we are, of Birmingham City Football Club, St Andrews, uh, Wayne Rooney's current side. Um, I hate that bloke, uh, but yeah, as you can see, just there, that is, uh, that is how close we are to St Andrews football ground. So, uh, it's a Birmingham City place, obviously. Gonna go and see if we can get checked in early, hopefully, and then crack on with Digba. Enjoy the video, guys. So yeah, they let us check in to the hotel an hour and a quarter early, uh, which is nice of them. It's, it's basic, it is what it is, but look at this, £39.60 is all it's cost for New Year's Eve. So, it's, it's clean, tidy, uh, warm. Uh, yeah, for £39.60 on New Year's Eve, and we're only like a 20 minute walk uh, maximum from Digbeth on the outset, so really not too bad value. So yeah, this is the bar of our hotel. Um, it's no real hours, something like that. There's that lovely roaring fire going uh, down there. Sky Sports and stuff on. Guys, uh, you're not going to find any real hours and stuff, but it's a warm, welcoming, friendly place right in the shadow of uh, St Andrews. So yeah, obviously there's Birmingham City stuff uh, on the wall and uh, blue and white, exactly what you'd expect to find. Okay, so we've made it to Digbeth. Uh, it's only been about a 10, 12 minute walk. Uh, so not too bad for my hotel at all. The rainbow that we were gonna stop at first isn't until the evening, but it is New Year's Eve, so we're not really sure what we'll find open in what order. So it might be a bit of a higgledy piggledy way round today. However, the next pub down, the Old Crown, uh, which on its outside system from 1368. Uh, and just, I'm gonna step up, just have a look at this. What a, what a beautiful looking uh, building. Uh, that one, the door's open, so that's definitely open. So stop number two of the day is gonna be the Old Crown. Now, this one is absolutely beautiful. Uh, there's a big history board uh, of the Old Crown here. So uh, from 1368, the building, a Tudor building. Um, in 1575, Queen Elizabeth I rested her head here, apparently, on her way home from attending a party at Kenilworth Castle. And also, behind me, there is a beautiful well uh, that is also it's thought to be 30 feet deep uh, and a thousand years ago it actually sunk madness i'm going to take you through so this is yeah this is a beautiful well let's have a look try not to drop my phone down there even holding it with two hands yep i wouldn't want to fall down there a lovely garden area and it's just lovely alcoves rustic feeling it's just it's beautifully decked out the pub in general And they've got a really good little selection of stuff. Good, good for craft beer drinkers. A lovely selection of stuff on the bar. Three hand pulls, neck oil and gamma ray, which I like. Just a, just a gorgeous, gorgeous old pub this. Really impressed. I, I tell you what, Digbeth is an interesting looking little place. Um, it reminds me of a, a little London borough, to be honest. Um, there's, there's loads of stuff to look at, loads of interesting graffiti and other stuff. I mean, just look at this. I don't want this to be a salvage yard or something, but all these like crushed cars and stuff on. Um, it's just, it's just a pretty cool. Thanks, buddy. It's just, a, it's just a pretty cool little, uh, little area. So this is our next stop. Is Birdie's Bar because uh, this one is open. So uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna keep keeping on until, uh, until we can't keep on anymore and just see what we can find that is open. This place is pretty damn cool. Have a look at it. It's like, it is, it is just. Uh, Eat this. It's not somewhere that I've ever sort of seen before. We've got some food coming as well, so I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. They've got a, uh, a street food vendor over in the uh, over the corner called uh, Locked and Loaded Street Food. Um, so, but yeah, this is uh, it's a really unique, interesting little gaff. This. I told you we'd order some food from the street vendors. Have a look at that. Barbecue covered chicken wings, chicken tenders rather, double cheese and bacon burger, and uh, pepperoni pizza loaded fries. Top bombing. Really blown away by that bird is. It's around the back of part of junkyards, which is uh, quite one of those crazy golf, cool crazy golf places. So it's all kind of the same business. So we're in this, uh, we're in this, we're in this little industrial area. So the the bit that's got all the car, uh, the, the car bits, 
uh, but it looks like it's also not only is, it's a busy car park, that's a car park. There's some music coming from in there, so we're gonna go and explore that in a minute, see what we have. But this one's open, apparently, at Drop Shot. It's right next door to a Roxy. Um, so we're picking drop shot over rocks. They look kind of similar type businesses and we've done a lot of rocks uh, over the country already. So uh, stop number four today is drop shot. It's very similar to what Roxy is sort of thing with the, the games and stuff. So pool table, loads of table tennis tables, football table, the basketball things. One of those awful punch pad machines. Uh, and Sky Sports and things. But, uh, yeah, got a decent little selection on the, uh, on the taps. I like, I like little places like this, they're a bit of fun. Uh, pizza oven and stuff over there. It's all good, man. So wandering up through uh, the back streets of Digbeth, it's, it's a really happening, vibrant little area. Um, it's like a craft beer, I don't know what you, what you call it really, it's got loads of street vendors and something in. Beer Hoff or so, oh, beer, so beer Hoff? Beer Hass, Beer Hoff. Looks like a, yeah, there's loads of families and kids and stuff going in there uh, for some event or something. That's, that's ticketed, so we've wandered past that. Um, but we've wandered up to, and we've just caught them at opening time, so it's four o'clock, and Dead Wax are just about to open. This looks right up my street, uh, to be honest. Uh, seedy looking, street corner bar, great logo. Um, fantastic graffiti and stuff on the outside of the building. Uh, yeah, this looks, this looks right up, uh, up our street. So this is gonna be stock five of the day. Uh, Dead Wax Digbeth. This is right up my street. This is absolutely like, this is a, this is a proper little live. Um, they've got 120, uh, capacity gig room and stuff upstairs. Lovely little courtyard and stuff like that. But this is just a, this is just a damn cool little place. So tonight, New Year's Eve, we've got DJs on down here till three in the morning. Live music going on upstairs. My wife standing in the middle of the bar. But yeah, just look at this proper, cool, nice, nice little bar. Well pleased that we uh, we managed to time this one right. For we time one right, and we got there right bang on opening time. Go us. Let's hope the rest of the day pans out like that, eh? So, uh, Dead Wax, absolutely banging bar. That is Liam, the guy uh, running that at the moment. Absolutely lovely fella, salt of the earth. Um, wanted back past the rainbow, see if we get in there. Yeah, his lights are on and there is definitely some movement, but no, still no sign of an actual opening time. Uh, down the side road that we're on, it's called Alcester Street. Uh, past the spotted dog, they don't have until five, so we're still about half an hour early for that, but the good news is, the Fountain Inn is definitely open. There's definitely signs of life, and they've got the darts. There's no darts on. They've got darts replays on. I'm just trying to help. Uh, so the Fountain Inn is going to be our next stop. Uh, our good buddy James uh, and his uh, his lovely other half Kim are on their way to meet us, I believe. Um, so it should be a should be a good day. We'll go back to the spotted dog in a little while. This one's a lovely little pub. It's really well presented, really clean. Yeah, but I think it's great around for the sport. But this is the this is the thing that you really have to uh, have a look at. So if you go down the stairs, past the lovely little fire that's burning, and you get down into the uh, the second sort of little bar area. I mean, how often do you find something like this parked in the uh, the basement bar of a pub? Hey, really, uh, really sort of unique thing to find. Um, but yeah, lovely. Lovely one this is, just, again, it's just a little street corner bar uh, in the middle of Digbeth. It's nice. Honestly, how many pubs can say that they've got a car, an old style car parked downstairs in there? I love things like that. Quirky, nice, different, all sorts of goodness. Right, it's a bit of a hill to walk down from the fountain to the Mosley Arms, where, uh, which also doubles up as a hotel. We have once stayed here before when we came for a gig, uh, so we are familiar with the gaff. Uh, so that is stop seven of the day. Most arms. Uh, so the most arms. Yeah, we stayed here for a gig one night. It's had a massive before. It actually looks uh, quite modern uh, and up to date now. James is here. Your wave. That is his happy face and his better half. See? Yeah. Yep. That's uh, that's about as happy as he gets. So uh, you've you've actually done all right with that. Um, and I'm still hate calling him James as well. His name's not James. Uh, yeah, so the Mosley Arms have definitely had a refurb since we were in here before. It, looks, uh, it smells and looks and, and feels a lot fresher and cleaner now. Uh, I wonder if they've updated the, uh, the rooms and stuff as well. Uh, two minute walk away from the Mosley brings you to, uh, you won't miss it, but, uh, there are lights flashing. Uh, first Irish bar of the day. I reckon we can find another couple of Irish bars around here from what people have said as well. Uh, James is well happy still, look. He's just smiling, look. The back of his head smiles back on the front. Uh, so yeah, stop number eight of the day is Cleary's Irish Pub. The Irish bar of the day, it's deceptive, it's, it's really big uh, inside. It looks, it looks tiny from the outside. Got a load of balloons around, and anybody who's watched the channel before knows that I'm not a massive fan 
of balloons. However, Kim's not a fan of balloons either, so there is someone on my wavelength finally, although he's now going to take the piss out of that. That's what he does. It's stupid. It's not stupid, they're horrible. Balloons are the devil, they're absolutely horrible. But uh, you can say they're gearing up for a, a bit of a New Year's celebration, but any Irish bar on New Year's Eve at midnight is going to be banging it. So, yeah, nice one. We're going to be sort of navigating the outskirts of uh, Digbeth now, round back to where the, uh, the main town bits are. Don't know what we're going to find with regards to tickets over now, but. Wandering around the outskirts brings us to our next stop, the town crier. Uh, James and Kim have gone off to do their own thing. So it's just us again for the remainder of the evening. Uh, I think this is stop number nine, I think. Uh, this one's definitely more of a local as well. Seems nice and friendly. Uh, got a uh, sports going. Locals pub friendly, New Year's Eve, innit? Everyone's friendly. There's a new one on me. There's a cat on the top of the fruit machine. <laughs> See, I wasn't making it up. Just don't see that every day. Ah, an absolute tragedy. This is one that was highly recommended to us to go to. Uh, the Lamp Tavern. Uh, in fact, Liam, in uh, Dead Wax earlier, told us that this was uh, the best pint of Guinness he had ever had. So we were very much, or I certainly was, very much looking forward to this, but it doesn't look like they're even, uh, perhaps they're not open Sundays normally, uh, and they're, they're not doing today. So, we shall carry on. Um, there's another pub that looks like it's a dead pub that's gone, uh, called the Queen's Arms. That's uh, obviously been converted into flats or something. That's not there anymore. But yeah, very, very sadly, we can't get into the Lamp Tavern. So, on we go. Everything I just said, because we managed to wander up past and the lovely, kind gentleman that was uh, uh, just opened the door to let someone out, uh, let us in. So we've come in. I have got to try the Guinness. But it is a beautiful, lovely little bar here. Eh? We got in. And I'm so excited about trying this Guinness now. I'm mega excited. In fact, it's making its way to me right as we speak. God bless you. I'm not videoing you, I'm videoing me. I'm videoing me. Thank you very much, thank you. So here it is. But, uh, we were told by Dead, uh, Dead Wax, the best Guinness he's ever tasted. I'll tell you what. It's pretty accurate. That's pretty, that's pretty accurate. That's superb. I can highly recommend this place. So we managed to get in the, uh, the lamp tower. Thank God we did. What a lovely little place. Run by an absolutely lovely, salt of the earth little chap. Walking around the outskirts now, trying to get into the rest of them. The anchor was recommended to us several times, uh, but that's got its doors closed. So we move on. Um, uh, gonna have to go back, uh, back towards the center of the, the dig that we were at earlier, I think now. So yeah, shame. Don't know if that's opening later or not, but at the moment, the anchor is all in darkness. All wander down the same street uh, that we couldn't get into. The white swan comes up. Uh, and that one has its door wide open. So uh, this should be stop number 11 of our day so far, the white swan. Oh, this one is absolutely insane. Grade two listed building. Um, just absolutely amazing. Some of the tiles and stuff. And, uh, some hand pulls on. And just, uh, yeah, lovely. Uh, but look at the air, uh, the tiles and things in here. This is just a, an absolutely beautiful. Um, there's another bar behind here as well. But yeah, what, what a stunningly beautiful bar. If anyone's got any history on the White Swan, because the staff don't know the, uh, the year or anything, uh, please hit us up in the comments. Let us know how old it is. It's beautiful. This is a bit of a thing of beauty when you find pubs sort of this age. The brass on the doors and the things. And just look at this corridor. So this goes down to the toilets in the White Swan. But just look at this. You can tell the age of something. I would, I would put this sort of early to mid 1800s, but absolutely beautiful. And a second bar room. It's just lovely. Just an absolutely stunning pub. So apparently 1899 is actually when the White Swan's from. So the people that are running it now, they've only been there five weeks. Uh, fair play to them. Um, they're very enthusiastic, very keen about it. They're gonna turn the upstairs bit into a restaurant. Um, so we've promised we will definitely go back uh, and have some food there when they do. It's a lovely place. It's, it's steeped in history. It's a lovely place. Right, we've done a massive great circuit. I'm on 10,000 steps for the day already, fitness influencer, um, as you know. So uh, we've come back sort of full circuit to where we walked past a few hours ago. It wasn't open. The Spike Dog, it is now open. So this is going to be our 12th stop of the day. It is coming up. It's gone at 8 o'clock. So we're four hours countdown of 2023 left. Um, I, so I don't know what we're going to find. It's ticket, not ticket, letting in, not letting in. Um, but we've had a good day already. We're going to carry on going until we can't get anywhere else. And then we're probably going to end up in that subside uh, until two minutes past midnight when I'm going for a kebab. 
lucky wife, eh? This one is, this is a little hidden gem on the side of it, this is deceptive. Um, so lovely, uh, three hand pumps out, lovely roaring real fire. But yeah, uh, a lovely one, I could easily go under the radar, I would have said. Uh, obviously setting up some, uh, some evenings live music uh, and stuff, up the other end. DJ box. It could easily get missed, and it shouldn't be, it's really nice. Uh, wandered back up to the rainbow. Uh, we've tried to get here three times so far today. Um, it's a ticketed only event this evening, so uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the doors are still shut at nearly nine o'clock. Um, there's music playing. There was music playing when we went in there, or was outside that an hour or so ago. Uh, no, three hours ago, I think it was. Madness. It's all right, so we can't do the rainbow, uh, so we'll scratch that one off. So we're going to carry on wandering down this way. Oh, what a palaver. Right, so, uh, yeah, three times we tried the rainbow, not interested, uh, ticket only. Just, no one even seems to know when they're opening. Uh, lad, when we tried to go in there, uh, he came out to us and he was like, oh, um, yeah, well, I would let you in, but there's no one serving on the bar yet. I'm not entirely sure how difficult he thought it was to serve on the bar, but he wasn't interested, so no problem. Uh, moved on, big bull's head. Uh, walked in, loads of music playing, loads of people in there, loads of people drinking. Old fella in there just walked in just before us. Walk in, proper Peggy Mitchell voice. The bird behind the bar, she goes, we closed! Uh -oh. All right, no problem. So we, we couldn't go there. Some people around here need to learn some people skills at this time, I'll tell you. Uh, so we didn't do that one. One, one around, Hennessy's, shut. Uh, completely shut us down, nothing going. Um, we found out the anchor, by the way. Uh, the reason that that is closed, we couldn't get in there, just not bothering tonight either. So that's why we haven't done that. Uh, Norton's, ticketed only. Uh, reasonably rude, Dorman, um, on, the, on the door. Just other, other girls walked up in front. They went, oh, can we come and drink? He went, no, nah, ticket only. At these girls that were sitting in front of us, so. Didn't even bother asking them. Um, so we have winded up to where the ball ring is, beautiful ball ring, and this beautiful church uh, for the Ballroom Tavern, which is a craft union pub. They're not tickets, they're open. In we go. Yes, yeah, the proper craft union pub doing proper craft union things. As am I. A bit loud, so I'll say more about that side. But yeah, it's a party hour. Yeah, exactly what it says in the tin. Craft Union pub doing craft union things. Everyone's having a good time in there. It's a nice atmosphere. It all sounds. Um, it all sounds pretty cool to be honest. Um, but yeah, we've, we've run into that sort of funny part where there's nowhere that we're gonna go. So we're heading to Weatherspoons, the beautiful Chinese uh, Chinese district of uh, Birmingham, which is very, very nice, very, very beautiful, very well lit up. I can see a sign that says karaoke. I might get distracted, no, I won't. Um, heading for Weatherspoons, which is, yeah, just outside uh, Digbeth. So we've come out to come out of Digbeth. Then I think we're gonna head to subside. So just on the other side of Chinatown is, uh, we're in a gay village basically of Birmingham now before we head back up to the side. Uh, but yeah, uh, the weather spoons behind us is called the Dragon Inn. So uh, it's dragged me in. Terrible joke, I know. I'm here all week. I'm not, I'm going down tomorrow. But Dragon Inn, next stop. Uh, it's a well busy weather spoon. Like, I don't think it's anything, but yeah, it's well busy in here. Like, um, it's a big old pub goes all the way around the corner. It's obviously called the Dragon Inn uh, because it's in Chinatown. So that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Quick, Service is very, very quick, considering how busy they are. Um, the mood's jovial, the, the Dortmund were friendly. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a bad space, and uh, don't worry, I will remember to get a photo with a carpet. Here you go. Here it is. Hey! The lads are in. Right, final port of call. Uh, as I said, I'm bored of wandering around places that are all... Uh, all so we knew what we were getting tonight. This is a 6am finish, You can't, and they charge anyway to get in, like Rock City doing Nottingham. On a thing, so you can't be garage place like that. They do charge again, that's fine. So we paid so subside big rock venue in Birmingham in Digbeth, back in Digbeth. Uh, this is our final port of call for the night. I will do a video uh, after midnight saying happy new year and uh, so that you can see if I manage to get steaming in the two hours that we've got left until midnight. Dorman's friendly, staff are friendly, the music sounds absolutely banging in there. So dead happy to be seen in the new year just here. Even my wife is ecstatic, as you can see. And trust me, that is as ecstatic as it gets. A free shot, I'll see you later. Yeah, I really like it in here already. Uh, it's this is a dirty, proper. This is a proper rock bar. Loving it already. <laughs> 